Hi, I'm Kevin with Micromeasurements, and I'd like you to tell you about an instrument here that uh, Micromeasurements offered, it's, offers. It's called a gauge, a model 1300 gauge installation tester. And I'd like to show you the feature of this instrument and show you where it is very useful in uh, doing a QC check or making sure that your strain gauge installation is going to function correctly for the long term. Okay, this, this instrument uh, works with just about every strain gauge possibility. You can connect to it half bridges, full bridges, quarter bridges, and, and really any resistance. It has built in here uh, dummy resistors for connecting a 120, a 350 ohm uh, bridge. If your gauge is a thousand or any other resistant, you can hook up an external reference. Now, what this instrument does is it really does a test to make sure that your strain gauge is going to function correctly electrically. This is uh, typically done before the test and before you put on a protective coating. So what what we do, what the features are here, of course it's got a battery check button and right now I have a 350 ohm strain gauge connected. This is a ground strap. I'll show you that in a second. And this is a, a three wire quarter bridge connection so I'm connected here uh, as a three wire quarter bridge uh, connected to the D350. And I'll show you how you can QC a strain gauge with this. Basically, first we want to make sure our battery's working. Second, this is a 5% range and a 1% range. So looking at the scale, the 5% range is at the bottom. The 1% range is the next one up. So this is just going to tell me the tolerance. how. How close to 350 is my strain gauge? So if I press the 5% button, uh, you can see that the needle barely moves. So I need to zoom in on it a little bit, get a little closer reading. So I'll push the 1% button. Now I'm reading on the 1% uh, scale, plus or minus, and I can see that I'm about 0.15% of 350 ohms. Now that's, that's fine. You, you just want to make sure that your strain gauge is within a range that can be balanced uh, effectively by the instrumentation that you're going to use in your test later. Okay, if I want to know the resistance of the gauge, I can press the green button. This is the ohm button. And on the top scale, you can see that this is 350 ohms. Now, the really nice feature of the Model 1300 is it has a mega ohm feature. And most commercial mega ohm meters uh, are going to uh, use a very high voltage to check resistance to ground. Now, you don't want to put a high voltage across your strain gauge because anything over about 100 volts, and these mega ohm meters can typically use, you know, 500 to 250 to 500 volts, there's a good chance of uh, arcing. The um, insulation strength of a strain gauge is typically around 100 volts. So the Model 1300 accomplishes a uh, mega ohm check uh, using only uh, two 9 volt batteries, about 15 volts. Now, it's not a high accuracy test, but with a strain gauge, you're not interested in a high accuracy mega ohm resistance to ground reading. What you really want to know is, is it less than or greater than 10,000 mega ohms? So it's really kind of like a go or no go check. So you don't need that high precision and the higher voltage that come along with that. So I'm going to press the mega ohm button and on the top scale, I can see that it right now it's reading about, uh, 100 mega ohms. That's too low. What, I, what you want to see with the strain gauge is up here on this end about 10k mega ohms. It's kind of like the go or no go. If it's less than that, I've got problems I want to fix. So the problem that you typically have when you have a low resistance to ground is flux. And in fact, I have left the flux on here. Uh, after soldering, I did not go back and use the micro measurements uh, rosin solvent to clean that up. So let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit and we'll see a difference that makes. Now residual soldering flux does a couple of things. Uh, first of all, it's corrosive. So it's going to eat away at the uh, copper wires and the thin foil that makes up the strain gauge. And the second thing is what we're seeing here is it's electrically conductive. Uh, now that's going to cause resistance to ground problems which can lead to noise in your test, but probably more importantly, a low resistance to ground is a good indicator that you've left flux behind and that's going to cause uh, long-term problems with your strain measurement. So we're going to very thoroughly remove this. And I'm going to work this brush uh, under the wires, in between the wires. 
I'm going to do this about three times. Now you notice that I'm blotting this dry. I'm taking a gauze pad. You want to absorb it. You're dissolving this uh, flux into the liquid and you don't want to let it evaporate or it's just going to redeposit the flux right back on the surface. So I'm blotting it off before it has a chance to evaporate. So one more time here. Okay. I'll try to get under those wires a little bit. Okay, now let's hook our ground strap back up and see what effect we've had on it. Now remember before it was down there around 100 uh, mega ohms. Uh, now I'm about up to 200. But it's climbing very rapidly. What's going on here, and I could probably fan it with my hand, and uh, you can watch it going up, 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 up. There's apparently still a little bit of liquid flux there, and I'm actually fanning this. And it's very quickly evaporating, and now I'm right up around 10K mega ohms. So that's an indicator that the cleaning job was effective. Now we're above 10K, and we know we're good. So I've gotten all the uh, residual flux off there. I can now seal this up with a protective coating and know that my gauge is going to remain active for many, many years.